Hi, my name is Leah, and I'm with the nonprofit organization called Invasive Species Action Network. Our mission is to share information about invasive species and give you tools to help prevent their spread. Today, we're going to be learning about an invasive species issue of invasive pests. So, this is what we're going to cover today. What exactly are invasive pests? Why they're a problem? How they can be introduced and spread? Then we're going to highlight some different invasive plant pests and then challenges to managing them. But first things first, let's cover what an invasive species is. An invasive species is when a species is introduced to one area into a new area. Once that species is there, it can cause harm to our economy, local plants and wildlife, or even human health. Some examples of what that might look like are invasive species can cost us millions of dollars to control us, control them, affecting the economy. They can gobble up all of the native and natural species found in an area, affecting the ecology. Or even they can spread harmful diseases affecting human health. Pests are considered a type of invasive species. And many pests are simply an insect that has been introduced to a new area and causes harm. Some pests that are introduced can cause specific kinds of damage. So they can kill fruits and vegetables that are being grown by farmers. They can damage and kill trees in the forest. They can kill trees in city neighborhoods. And then some pests can even destroy pollinators like honeybees. Here is a really great visual of what damage can happen once an invasive pest can show up. So this is a picture of a neighborhood on the left and you can see here there's trees of course lining the street and an invasive pest, this one right here, um, was found in that area. It was reported and then the local officials took action to help prevent its spread. The picture on the right is afterwards. So a crew came in and removed and destroyed all of the trees because this is the only way we can stop the spread of this invasive pest and others. Here are some close-up looks at how invasive pests can damage uh, specifically trees really here. We have some great examples of bark and wood borers. You see on the right hand part of the screen where they've drilled in through the bark or gone in between the bark and damaged the tree. Um, at the bottom there where the leaf is completely chewed and nibbled on, this is um, the work of a defoliator. So they just completely remove all the leaves on a tree, damaging it, obviously making it hard to photosynthesize. And then the two middle pictures are different ways where um, the tips and even just the leaf surface where they can, um, invasive pests can take uh, liquids out of the tree and just really damage um, how the tree um, is growing. I hope you're wondering how invasive pests might have gotten introduced. Um, and really, one of the most common forms is transporting and moving stuff around Earth. So we have this little map here. You see we as humans move all kinds of things all over the place using trucks, using trains, using planes, and then of course using ships that travel across the ocean to different places. This is a really common way that pests can hitch a ride on any of these vehicles and find a new place to live. Um, also, many time invasive pests can hitch a ride on crates like you see here. They may lay eggs or even the adults can attach onto that wooden um, part of that crate and then show up in a new place um, and find some new plants to, um, to eat. So it's really important to keep in mind that all of our activities are really moving pests around and so we have to be very mindful and pay attention to those activities. Once an invasive pest has arrived in a new place, it can spread further on things like firewood, on nursery plants and trees, and then also on all different kinds of food. So again, we pay attention to what might have been hitchhiking on these things and make sure they're not moving into new locations. So I'd like to take a look at a couple very specific invasive pests so you know what they look like and the things that they're capable of. First is the spotted, spotted lantern fly. 
This is a plant hopper that's been causing problems in places like Pennsylvania and New York ever since it showed up in 2014. The trouble with this insect is it likes to eat 70 different kinds of plants. That's a lot of plants, but yummy ones like nut trees and grapevines are some of its favorite. The life stages of this bug are worth knowing, so let's take a closer look at them. So the box that's labeled A is a picture of an egg mass. So that gray um, hard thing on the bark is actually a bunch of eggs that have been laid by the adults. Once those eggs emerge, they start going into the next phase of their life cycle, the nymphs. So in boxes B and C are different stages of um, the growth of that insect with nice, brightly colored and also spotted. And finally, the other final uh, pictures are the adult version of the spotted lanternfly. So you can see that that common name, spotted, and then lantern, really describe what this insect looked like. So it has spots on it, really in multiple stages, and then that adult kind of looks like a little paper lantern. So you can see why it might be called that. Um, so for the most part, the spotted lanternfly is found in those areas of New York and Pennsylvania and other mid-Atlantic states, and those uh, states are really doing a good job to try to contain it and to keep it from spreading to new areas. Okay, next is our emerald ash borer. So this little tiny bright shiny green insect is about the size of a penny, which is really quite small it likes to eat only ash trees. And you can see in this picture here where it is chewed through the woody part under the bark. So the common name of this bug, emerald ash borer, really does describe not only what it looks like, but what it likes to eat and how it causes damage to a tree. It's been in the U.S. for actually quite a long time, since 2002 when it was first found in Michigan, and it has since eaten its way through 35 different states. Next is the brown marmorated stink bug. Much like it name, its name suggests, it is brown. Marmorated means it has this cool marbled pattern you can see on its back. And stink, if you were to crush it, it does let off a kind of a stinky odor. Um, this bug likes to eat a lot of the different kinds of foods that we like to eat and it'll damage it like you see here, it's done on this apple in the picture. There's not a lot of too, there's not too many fruits or veggies that it doesn't like to eat. If you check out the map here, you can see it's been found in a lot of different states in the U.S. One thing I want to make note of, um, and really for all these bugs, is that it can look like some of our beneficial native insects. So it's good to know the difference. So looking at key features, maybe on its antenna or a different um, striping on its abdomen can help us tell the difference. Next is the Asian longhorned beetle. Like you can guess, I mean, check out those antenna. They are long. So the longhorn beetle is really um, describing what it looks like with those nice white stripes. Um, this uh, insect is really troublesome too because it likes a lot of different kind of hardwood tree species. One of its favorites is maple. So if you're like me and you like maple syrup, I find this pretty disturbing and I wanna make sure this bug is not spreading anywhere um, onto maple trees. One way to look to see if um, it's in a forest or if there's any signs of it. You can see the picture on the bottom here. When um, it emerges, it again, it chews on the interior part of a tree and emerges in this little hole here that's about the size of a dime. That's kind of a sign of that we might have um, Asian longhorn beetles uh, affecting some trees. Again, this has mostly been found in the northeastern United States, so places like New York, Massachusetts, Ohio, but we definitely want to be on the lookout for this one regardless of where we live. Ah yes, next the murder hornet. This was just only recently found in the United States and so far only in Washington state. While I wouldn't want to be stung by this bug, it's really only a big concern to honeybees. It can go in and destroy a honeybee hive really quickly in just a few hours. So. This pest is quite large, two inches long, so it's really probably something you're not gonna miss. It's really giant, which is, um, sometimes it's also called the giant murder hornet. Okay, and last but not least, 
the nun moth. Now this is a nice little hairy moth. You can see that in the picture. Its legs are all furry there. Um, and this particular pest uh, likes to feed on um, the needles of different spruce, fir, and larch pine trees. So the, the needles of a tree rather than the hardwood trees. And you can see in this picture, it's done a really good job of eating some of the needles on that tree, really what's called defoliating again. Um, so this particular insect has not yet been found in the United States, but it's all throughout different places in Europe and is of great concern. I mentioned it a few minutes ago, but I want to um, express again this idea that some of the invasive pests can look like or can be confused with our beneficial native insects. So it's really good to know the difference. Um, so here's a picture of some lookalikes to our Asian longhorn beetle. So that's in the red box circle is the Asian longhorn beetle. And it's compared to some of the native, um, other native beetles that this is from New York State. So they've done a good job comparing. So sort of long abdomen bugs or bugs that have long antenna. Um, but in reality, there's a couple of key features to know the difference between the two. So it pays to look out some ID sources and make sure you know the difference. If you're not sure, you can always contact um, your local Department of Agriculture to help um, get some assistance on IDing insects. So with all these pests, you might be wondering, is anybody actually doing anything about them? And the short answer is yes. There's lots of different agencies in the government who monitor the ports where shipments arrive to and then inspect those shipments. Um, we also have people that are scanning both the urban and wild forest, forests looking for unusual insects. The picture uh, here where you see someone in this suit um, is actually it's from the Washington Department of Agriculture and they have found a nest of murder hornets and they are trying to destroy them before those murder hornets spread to a new location. Um, the top picture is of a net in a forest, and these are used to monitor what insects are there. So if um, a forester finds an unusual insect that um, is non-native, it's a way to help look more and potentially stop the spread of that insect if it's found. So it's really good that we have a lot of different um, agencies and people working on this problem, but we actually, we need more help. So now's the time for you and your friends to help on this invasive pest problem. And there's a couple of really easy things to do to be on the lookout. So first, don't move firewood. If you're going camping, you're traveling to a new location, just buy it where you burn it. Don't bring it from your house and use that. You could have some hitchhiking bugs uh, on your stuff and then you're bringing it into the forest. So either buy it where you burn it or if it's okay to collect it where you're camping, then do that. The next couple are just looking for unusual things. It could be doing tree checks during the summer months for things like uh, defoliation or those holes that I showed you in um, the bark of a tree. You can be looking in a pool um, if you have one in your backyard for maybe some insects that are unusual. It could be on things like packaging or nursery plants or even a Christmas tree. So if you see something unusual, just report it to your local Department of Agriculture. There are lots of resources to learn more about invasive pests. Hungry Pests is one really cool place you can check out online. There's lots of different tips that you can use to help prevent the spread of all kinds of things. I already mentioned the don't move firewood, but we can keep our gear clean. We can keep our vehicles clean. And um, cleaning things is a really great way to stop the spread of all kinds of invasive species. Here are a couple of other great tools. If you want to take a closer look at some different mapping sources of where, where plant pests and different invasive pests are, um, there's that first link. The Don't Move Firewood website has a lot of great information on specific pests. There's some great youth activities on the APHIS website. And then finally, at Invasive Species Action Network, we have more videos, we have more worksheets, we have all kinds of other things that you can learn more about invasive species at stopais.org. So I hope you have learned a little bit more about invasive pests today. And don't forget um, to join us at our website to learn more. Thank you.